Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at an ultra tiny Windows 11 Pro desktop PC known as the Melee Quieter 3. Last year we took a look at the Quieter 2 and it was powered by an Intel Celeron N4105. And overall, it really wasn't a bad setup for the form factor and power consumption because when it comes down to it, these are very low power consumption PCs. They're not meant for AAA gaming, but we can get some old retro stuff out of the way pretty well on these machines. But with the new Quieter 3, we've got an upgraded Jasper Lake CPU, and it's actually one of my favorite low-end Intel CPUs for 2022. It's the N5105. We've still got four cores, but we've got a boost up to 2.9 gigahertz and a much better iGPU when you compare it to the older Gemini Lake chips. So inside of the box, you're going to get a mounting bracket with all the hardware you need to mount this on the back of your monitor, under your desk, or basically anywhere you want to mount this thing. We also get our USB Type-C power supply. This runs on 12 volts and we get a 24 watt adapter and obviously the mini PC itself. And one of the most impressive things about this PC is its size. Here's a quick comparison between an Xbox controller and the PC itself. As you can see, the Xbox controller is actually bigger than this whole PC. Another thing a lot of people might like about this unit is it's totally silent, hence the name Quieter 3. Up front here, not much going on, but our power button, it does have an LED backlight. Over on the right hand side, we've got three full size USB 3.0 ports. Over on the left hand side, we've got a Kinston lock. And around back, we've got another full size USB 3.0 port, a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, micro SD card slot, two full size HDMI ports. We also have that USB Type C power in, and unfortunately, it's only for power. This does not transfer data whatsoever. And they've also included a gigabit Ethernet port. When it comes to upgradeability, there's not much we can do here except for add an NVMe SSD. It does support an 80 millimeter drive here, up to four terabytes, and they sell a couple different variants. You can get one with 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage, up to 256, but everyone that I've seen so far only comes with eight gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. I just quickly added a one terabyte drive to get a little more storage out of it. But when it comes to that CPU, we've got that Intel Celeron N5105. Four cores, four threads, base clock of two gigahertz with a turbo up to 2.9 on a single core or turbo on all four cores up to 2.8. We've got built-in Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units instead of the old 12 to 14 in the Gemini Lake. This does make a big difference. It has 8 gigabytes of LPDDR4 RAM. This is non-user upgradable. It's soldered to the board. It's running at 2,933 megahertz. And unfortunately, like a lot of these mini PCs hit the market recently, it's running in single channel, which is going to hurt that GPU performance. We've got 128 gigabytes of eMMC storage on board, a micro SD card slot, and like we saw, we can add an NVMe SSD up to 4 terabytes. Built-in Wi-Fi 6, Bluetooth 5.0, and it's running Windows 11 Pro right out of the box. So in this video, we're definitely going to be checking out the overall performance of this mini PC. I also want to test out some older PC games and emulation just to see how this little thing performs. So let's go ahead and jump right over to Windows 11 now. All right, so I've had it up and running for a little while. It gets a little warm, but I mean, this thing is incredibly small. My mouse almost covers the whole PC. Really snappy with this N5105. I've actually had really good luck with it. It's not a super powerful chip, but it definitely gets you by with web browsing, email checking, document editing, and even some emulation and gaming. Got that eight gigs of RAM, unfortunately single channel, but it is 2,933 megahertz, which is a boost over the older chips. And of course, we've got the Intel UHD graphics with 24 execution units. Checking out some web browsing on this thing, everything loads up really quickly, and I kind of expected it would with that Wi-Fi 6 built-in. I'm connected to my own Wi-Fi 6 router here, and yeah, I mean, it'll definitely load up everything you need, and when it comes to video playback, this little chip also does pretty good. I did notice a few more drop frames with this unit here than another one that I've recently tested that did have dual channel RAM, and I really think it comes down to that. Adding dual channel to these little iGPUs really does make a difference, and unfortunately, a lot of these manufacturers are keeping the 8 gigabyte models in single and 16 running them in dual. Okay, so I've got a 4K 60 video demo here from YouTube. I've turned scaling completely off. I really like to turn scaling off in Windows when I test this out, so we have a full, true 4K viewpoint here. Stats for Nerds is up in the top left hand corner. I'll get a bit closer in a second so we can check that out, but by the end of this I did have 24 drop frames, which is a lot more than I'm used to with this chip here when it's running with dual channel RAM. But overall, it's super smooth, and 24 out of 7,000 frames really isn't that bad, especially given the power consumption here. 
you can see that we're at a true 4K viewpoint here, and we've had 24 drop frames, kind of stayed here. I'd say we got about eight drop frames on the initial load in, and then the rest happened throughout the video. I also ran a few benchmarks. Here we have Geekbench 5, single core, 644, multi, 1953. 3D Mark Wildlife, this is a Vulcan benchmark for that GPU. We got a total score of 2300. And finally, Night Raid with a 3496. Nothing too impressive here, but I still want to see what kind of games we can run on this unit. And first up, we've got Half-Life 2. Definitely wanted to go with some older stuff given the performance of this chip here. We're at 1080p medium settings, and it's doing a really good job. I mean, the older stuff is going to work out just fine on this chip, even with single-channel RAM. Next on the list, Left 4 Dead 2. We're at 1080p low settings, and I also tried 900p medium settings, which gives me about the same frame rate here, but we averaged 73 FPS with this at 1080p. Here's a newer, lower-end game I always like to test. This is the Art of Rally. We're at low settings, I'm at 900p, and unfortunately I can't get a steady 60 out of it. Now, on another mini PC we recently tested on the channel with the same chip, but dual-channel RAM, we got an average of 68 FPS. So only having single-channel RAM in this machine is definitely hurting out that GPU performance. And I can basically see the same thing here with the original Skyrim. We're at 720p, low settings, and it does dip below 60. With dual channel RAM on this same chip, this will run at a constant 60. So you're not going to be able to natively play newer AAA games on this machine, but we can certainly stream them, whether you want to use Ethernet or Wi-Fi 6. Here's some cloud gaming. I've got Forza Horizon 5 running, and if you've got a good connection in your house, this does work out pretty well. But I gotta say, one area where this little chip does shine is emulation. Here we have Dreamcast, we're upscaled to 1080p using the ReDream emulator, Crazy Taxi 2, looking really good. Every once in a while I do see it dip down, and this is kind of the case with this game and the newer versions or the development versions of ReDream. But Dreamcast does work really well on this chip. Moving over to PSP using the standalone version of PPSSPP. Vulcan back in, Midnight Club Dub Edition, a harder one to emulate. We're at 2x here, running at full speed. I also tried the OpenGL back in. I could only take this game here up to 1x, but DirectX 11 or Vulcan is definitely the way to go. And finally, we've got some GameCube emulation using the Dolphin emulator. Now, the harder to emulate GameCube and Wii games, you will have to keep it at native resolution, but there are games we can take up to 720p, even with single-channel RAM. When it comes to emulation on this chip, I'm a huge fan of it. Now, really, it goes up to PS2. There are some PS2 games we can run on this chip at the native resolution, but that's about as far as we can go with it. But given the power consumption and form factor you can pick these up with, I think it does a really good job. Like I mentioned at the beginning of the video, it's a very low power consumption mini PC. While I'm doing my testing, I have this plugged into a kilowatt meter at the wall, and at idle we average only 4 watts. While gaming, this pulls a total of around 12 watts, and the maximum that I could get it to pull from the wall while maxing out the CPU and the GPU was 16 watts. One thing I was initially concerned about going into this mini PC were CPU temps. We don't have any kind of active cooling, this is totally silent, we've got a passive cooler on here. And it's totally possible to get this hot enough to thermal throttle, but the only time that ever happened for me was while I was running benchmarks. At idle, the CPU averages around 47 degrees Celsius. While gaming, it was much better than I thought it was going to be, only 86 degrees Celsius. This actually thermal throttles at 95 degrees. And the maximum that I could get this CPU to hit while running a few benchmarks in a row was 101 degrees Celsius.
So I was able to make this thing thermal throttle, but it didn't happen under normal use case scenarios. It actually did a really good job. Overall, it's a pretty neat little mini PC. It does have a lot going for it. The form factor for one thing, power consumption, and performance really isn't that bad, even though we're running single channel RAM. It would have been nice to have dual channel set up in this. They definitely could have soldered two 4 gig chips here instead of one 8 gig chip for the memory, and that would have helped out with the iGPU. But if you're in the market for a super small form factor, low power consumption Windows 11 PC, for web browsing, email checking, maybe some document editing, then I could recommend something like this. Now you don't go and pick it up specifically for gaming, it was never meant for gaming, but as you saw in this video, it can handle some older titles, and even some pretty good emulation up to GameCube. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. Really appreciate you watching. If you're interested in learning more about this little mini PC, I will leave a few links in the description. And if there's anything else you want to see running on it, just let me know in the comments below. But like always, thanks for watching.